If you was hanging with Vaughn, you had to accept everything that came with Vaughn. You had to accept that you was going to be in shooting. Accept that he, it was going to be that, and you had to be with it. You feel me? With Vaughn. In the shadows of Chicago's tumultuous streets, King Vaughn's meteoric rise as a rap prodigy became intricately woven into the perilous realm of gang culture. Born and bred in the heart of the South Side, he wielded his music as a profound reflection of the harsh realities surrounding him, earning both acclaim and notoriety. King Vaughn's speculated involvement with the Black Disciples, a connection thought to have led to his tragic demise adds a somber layer to his narrative. Today's video delves into the compelling stories of King Von's deadliest soldiers, the individuals who navigated the tumultuous terrain of gang life alongside him. Number one, Chief Keef. Keith Pharrell Cozart, known by his stage name Chief Keith, was born and raised in Chicago's South Side. Growing up in a neighborhood plagued by violence and crime, Chief Keith found solace in music. As a teenager, he began experimenting with rap and quickly developed a unique style and sound that would set him apart from his peers. In 2011, Chief Keith gained attention in the local Chicago music scene with his mixtapes, showcasing his raw talent and gritty lyrics. His breakout moment came in 2012 with the release of his hit single, I Don't Like. The song, with its catchy hook and aggressive delivery caught the attention of not only local fans but also industry heavyweights. One of those industry heavyweights was none other than Kanye West. Impressed by Chief Keef's raw talent, Kanye remixed I Don't Like and brought the young rapper into the national spotlight. This collaboration propelled Chief Keef's career to new heights and solidified his place in the music industry. Following the success of I Don't Like, Chief Keef released his debut studio album Finally Rich in 2012. The album featured collaborations with renowned artists such as Kanye West, 50 Cent, and Wiz Khalifa. It received received moderate success, peaking at number 29 on the Billboard 200 chart. Chief Keef's impact on the hip-hop industry can be seen in the rise of the mumble rap genre. His melodic style of rapping, characterized by its emphasis on flow and delivery rather than lyrical content, has been emulated by many modern artists. Chief Keef's influence can be heard in the music of artists such as Lil Uzi Vert, Playboy Cardi, and Trippy Red. His unique style, collaborations with other artists, and influence on subgenres like drill and mumble rap have solidified his place as a pioneer and influential figure in the industry. Chief Keef's ascent to prominence was not without controversy. His music, characterized by explicit lyrics and an unapologetic portrayal of street life, garnered both praise and criticism. While some hailed him as a drill music genre pioneer, others accused him of glorifying violence and perpetuating negative stereotypes. There is speculation about Chief Keef's affiliation with the Black Disciples Gang, a prominent street gang based in Chicago, Illinois. Growing up in the infamous O Block neighborhood exposed Chief Keef to the gang style lifestyle. This area gained notoriety after the 2011 killing of O.D. Perry, a Black Disciples gang member. O Block became synonymous with danger, witnessing the highest number of shootings in Chicago between 2011 and 2014. Chief Keef openly claimed the street gang from a young age, expressing it even in his lyrics, such as in Fredo Santana's My Lil song. O Block and 300, we come in them the hoods and I've been there since a youngin'. The gang's criminal activities and ongoing feuds with rival factions cast a dark shadow over Chief Keef's life, leading to encounters with law enforcement. One of the earliest incidents occurred in 2011 when Chief Keef was arrested for aggravated unlawful use of a weapon. This arrest marked the beginning of a series of legal issues that would plague his career. In 2012, Chief Keef was sentenced to house arrest for violating his probation. This setback did not deter him from releasing new music as he continued to work on his craft from the confines of his home. During this time, Chief Keef's popularity continued to grow, with fans eagerly awaiting his next release. However, Chief Keef's legal troubles escalated in 2013 when he was arrested for driving under the influence and speeding. This incident resulted in a two-month stint in a rehabilitation facility. Despite the setback, Chief Keef remained determined to overcome his personal struggles and focus on his music. In 2014, Chief Keef faced another setback when he was arrested for a parole violation. This led to a short jail sentence and further tarnished his public image. However, Chief Keef's loyal fan base stood by him, showing their support and belief in his talent. Throughout his career, Chief Keef has also been involved in various feuds and controversies with other artists. One notable feud was with fellow Chicago rapper Lupe Fiasco, who criticized Chief Keef's music for its negative influence on the youth. This feud sparked a larger conversation about the responsibility of artists and the impact of their lyrics on society. In recent years, Chief Keef has faced legal issues related to child support and paternity 
disputes. These personal struggles have further complicated his career and personal life. However, Chief Keef has remained dedicated to his music, releasing new projects independently through his own label, Glow Gang. Chief Keef's legal issues and controversies have undoubtedly had an impact on his career. They have overshadowed his musical achievements and at times threatened to derail his progress. However, Chief Keef's resilience and determination have allowed him to persevere and continue making music that resonates with his fans. Number two, Lil Durk. Dirk Derrick Banks was born on October 19, 1992 in Chicago, Illinois. Growing up in the tough neighborhoods of Inglewood and Southside, Dirk faced the harsh realities of inner city life from a young age. Music became an escape for Dirk, a way to express his experiences and emotions. Inspired by the likes of Chief Keef and Lil Wayne, he began writing and recording his own songs. Dirk's raw talent and unique storytelling ability quickly caught the attention of his peers and local music scene. In 2011, Dirk released his first mixtape, I'm a Hitter, which gained him some local recognition, but it was his second mixtape, Life Ain't No Joke, released in 2012, that truly put him on the map. The mixtape showcased Dirk's gritty lyrics and captivating delivery, resonating with listeners who related to his experiences in the streets of Chicago. Dirk's breakthrough moment came in 2013 with the release of his mixtape series, Signed to the Streets. The mixtapes garnered widespread attention and critical acclaim, solidifying Dirk's position as a rising star in the rap game. His unique blend of drill music and melodic hooks set him apart from his peers earning him a dedicated fan base. Recognizing his talent, major record labels took notice of Dirk's rising popularity. In 2014, he signed a recording contract with Def Jam Recordings, a milestone in his career. This partnership provided Dirk with the resources and platform to further elevate his music and reach a wider audience. In 2015, Dirk released his highly anticipated debut studio album, Remember My Name. The album showcased his growth as an artist and featured collaborations with industry heavyweights like Logic and Jeremy. It received positive reviews from critics and debuted at number 14 on the Billboard 200 chart. Despite his early success, Dirk faced challenges and setbacks along the way. He parted ways with Def Jam Recordings in 2018, but that didn't stop him from continuing to create and release music. Dirk remained resilient, dropping the mixtape Just Cause Y'all Waited in 2018, which further solidified his place in the rap scene. In 2019, Dirk signed with Alamo Records, a subsidiary of Interscope Records, further expanding his reach and opportunity. He continued to release music that resonated with his fans, including the hit single Three-Headed Goat in 2020, which featured fellow rappers Lil Baby and Polo G. Dirk's collaboration with Lil Baby didn't stop there. In 2021, the duo released their highly anticipated joint album, The Voice of the Heroes, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart. The album showcased their chemistry and solidified their status as two of the most influential artists in the industry. Throughout his career, Lil Dirk has encountered his fair share of controversies and legal challenges. Much like King Von and Chief Keef, Lil Durk has been linked to the Black Disciples Gang. Durk's engagement in Chicago's streets has frequently spilled over into his personal life, resulting in a series of high-profile incidents that grabbed headlines. One of the earliest controversies surrounding Durk was his alleged connection to a 2014 shooting incident. He faced arrest and attempted murder charges after a man was shot outside an Atlanta nightclub. However, the charges were later dropped due to a lack of evidence. This incident thrust Durk into the spotlight, raising questions about his ties to violence. In 2015, Durk faced legal troubles once again, getting arrested on gun charges. During a police stop in Chicago, he was found in possession of a loaded firearm. Dirk pleaded guilty to the charges and received a probation sentence. This incident acted as a wake-up call for the rapper, prompting him to reassess his decisions and shift his focus toward his music career. Despite these legal setbacks, Dirk continued to release music and achieve success in his career. He dropped the mixtape They Forgot in 2016, followed by his second studio album Lil Dirk 2X later that year. The album featured collaborations with artists like Future, Young Thug and Ty Dolla Dollar again, further solidifying Dirk's position in the a rap game. In 2019, Dirk faced another legal hurdle, this time with King Von. They were both charged with attempted murder in connection with a shooting outside a restaurant in Atlanta. The incident left one person injured and Dirk was accused of being involved. However, he maintained his innocence and the charges were eventually dropped due to a lack of evidence. This incident once again put Dirk's name in the headlines and raised questions about his involvement in violent activities. Dirk's personal life has also been the subject of controversy. He has been involved in various feuds with other artists, including Chief Keef, Tyga, and Game. These feuds have played out in public, with diss tracks and social media exchanges fueling the tension between the artists. However, Dirk has also shown a willingness to reconcile with his rivals, demonstrating a desire to move past the drama and focus on his music. Tragedy has also struck Dirk's personal life, with the deaths of his cousin OTF Nunu in 2014 and his brother D-Thang in 2021. These losses have undoubtedly had a profound impact on Dirk, shaping his perspective 
perspective and fueling his emotional and introspective style of rap. Despite the controversies and legal issues, Dirk has managed to maintain a loyal fan base and achieve commercial success. His music continues to resonate with listeners who connect with his raw and honest lyrics. Dirk's ability to channel his experiences into his music has allowed him to overcome adversity and establish himself as one of the most influential artists in the industry. Number three, Lil Reese. Lil Reese, born Tavares Lamont Taylor on January 6, 1993, in Chicago, Illinois, had a challenging upbringing that would shape his future in the music industry. Raised in the Englewood neighborhood, Lil Reese grew up in a large family and faced the harsh realities of living in a notorious 16-story high-rise housing project known as the Calumet Building. From a young age, Lil Reese found himself drawn to the vibrant hip-hop scene that permeated the streets of Chicago. It was during these formative years that he became affiliated with the Black Disciples Gang, a connection that would later influence his music and persona. By the time he reached his pre-teens, Lil Reese had relocated to 64th and Normal in Englewood, where he formed a close friendship with fellow rapper Lil Durk. As Lil Reese navigated the challenges of his environment, he discovered an outlet for his emotions and experiences through music. Inspired by the raw and unfiltered nature of drill music, a subgenre of hip-hop that originated in Chicago, Lil Reese began to hone his skills as a rapper. His lyrics reflected the harsh realities of street life, providing a voice for those who had been marginalized and overlooked. In 2012, Lil Reese's breakthrough moment arrived when he was featured on Chief Keef's hit single, I Don't Like. The song garnered widespread international attention and catapulted Lil Reese into the spotlight. His distinct voice and delivery resonated with audiences, and he quickly gained a loyal following. Building on the success of I Don't Like, Lil Reese began to release his own music and music videos, showcasing his unique style and storytelling abilities. Tracks like Us and Beef further solidified his presence in the hip-hop scene, earning him a reputation as one of Chicago's most promising up-and-coming artists. Lil Reese's talent did not go unnoticed. Producer No ID, known for his work with artists like Common and Kanye West, recognized Lil Reese's potential and signed him to Def Jam Recordings, a prominent hip-hop label. This partnership provided Lil Reese with the platform and resources to further develop his craft and reach a wider audience. Throughout his career, Lil Reese continued to collaborate with notable artists, including Fredo Santana and Lil Durk, further solidifying his status as a key player in the drill music movement. His gritty and authentic authentic approach to storytelling resonated with fans who appreciated his raw honesty and unapologetic demeanor. While his talent and raw authenticity have garnered him a loyal fan base, his personal life has been marred by a string of troubling incidents. In October 2012, a video surfaced online allegedly showing Lil Reese involved in a violent assault against a woman. The graphic footage sparked outrage and condemnation from the public. The incident raised serious questions about Lil Reese's character and behavior, leading to widespread criticism and scrutiny. Just a few months later, in in April 2013, Lil Reese found himself in legal trouble once again. He was arrested by the Chicago police on a warrant issued for criminal trespass, battery, and mob action. The charges stem from the video incident that had occurred in February 2012. Lil Reese's involvement in such violent acts only fueled the controversy surrounding him, further tarnishing his reputation. But Lil Reese's legal troubles didn't end there. In June 2013, he was arrested in Chicago and charged with motor vehicle theft. The incident occurred in April of that year when Lil Reese was unable to provide proof of ownership for a BMW 750 Lee. However, the charge was later dropped, providing a temporary respite from the legal woes that seemed to follow him. Unfortunately, Lil Reese's run-ins with the law continued. In July 2013, he was arrested once again, this time for marijuana possession. The arrest violated the terms of his probation, which had been imposed as a result of his earlier burglary charges. These repeated brushes with the legal system raised concerns about Lil Reese's ability to stay out of trouble and maintain a positive image. In May 2022, Lil Reese faced yet another legal setback. He was arrested for aggravated assault in Houston, Texas. The charges stem from an incident that occurred earlier that year. Lil Reese was subsequently held in the Harris County Jail, serving a seven-month sentence. His release in January 2023 marked the end of a challenging period in his life, but the controversies surrounding him continued to cast a shadow over his career. Beyond his legal issues, Lil Reese has also faced backlash for his controversial social media activity. In March 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, he posted a tweet that targeted Chinese people using offensive language. The tweet was widely condemned as racist, leading to the suspension of his Twitter account. Lil Reese's insensitive remarks drew criticism from fans and the public alike, further complicating his public image. Beyond the controversies and legal issues, Lil Reese's personal life has been marked by both triumphs and tragedies. In November 2019, he faced a life-altering event that would test his resilience and strength. On a fateful day in November 2019, Lil Reese found himself in the midst of a harrowing incident 
incident that would leave him critically wounded. While at a busy intersection in the Markham and Country Club Hills area, he suffered a gunshot wound to the neck during a violent altercation. The episode unfolded as Lil Reese was pursued by a driver in another car, leading to a high-speed chase that echoed with multiple gunshots, according to witnesses. The incident is speculated to be linked to rival gang activity. The severity of Lil Reese's injuries was evident, prompting an urgent trip to the hospital in critical condition. The shooting reverberated through the music industry and among his fan base, leaving many deeply concerned for his well-being. Despite the gravity of his injuries, Lil Reese showed remarkable strength and resilience. After a period of intense medical care and rehabilitation, he defied the odds and survived the shooting. In a powerful display of determination, Lil Reese announced his survival and recovery on social media, reassuring his fans that he was alive and well. Just a day after leaving the hospital, Lil Reese released a new song titled Come Outside. The release of this track served as a testament to his unwavering commitment to his music and his refusal to let adversity define him. It was a powerful statement that showcased his resilience and determination to continue pursuing his passion. Number 4. Fredo Santana in the early 2010s, a new wave of hip-hop artists emerged from the streets of Chicago, bringing with them a raw and gritty sound that would come to be known as drill music. Among these rising stars was Fredo Santana, born Derek Antonio Coleman on July 4, 1990, in Chicago, Illinois. Santana's journey in the music industry began in 2011 when he started recording his own tracks, showcasing his unique style and captivating storytelling abilities. Santana quickly gained attention with his debut mixtape, It's a Scary Sight, released on September 20th, 2012. The mixtape featured production from renowned producers such as TM88, Young Chop, and 12 Hunna, and included guest appearances from fellow Chicago artists like Chief Keef, Lil Reese, and Lil Durk. The project was a critical success, showcasing Santana's ability to deliver hard-hitting lyrics over dark and atmospheric beats. Building on the momentum of his debut mixtape, Santana released his second mixtape, Fredo Kruger, on February 28, 2013. This project further solidified his position in the drill music scene, featuring collaborations with artists like Migos, Jules Santana, and Soldier Boy. The mixtape's success led to a retail release via iTunes on May 7, 2013, exposing Santana's music to a wider audience. In November 2013, Santana achieved a significant milestone in his career with the release of his debut studio album, Trappin' Ain't Dead. The album, released under Savage Squad Records, showcased Santana's growth as an artist and featured guest appearances from notable artists such as Kendrick Lamar, Chief Keef, and Pee Wee Longway. Trappin' Ain't Dead peaked at number 45 on the U.S. Top R&B slash Hip Hop Albums chart, solidifying Santana's status as a rising star in the industry. As Santana's popularity continued to soar, he caught the attention of major record labels. In 2014, he announced plans to collaborate with Chief Keef on a joint album titled Blood Thicker Than Water. Although the album never materialized, it generated significant buzz and anticipation among fans. In July 2014, Santana further fueled excitement with the release of the track list for his upcoming album, Walking Legend. The album showcased Santana's versatility as an artist, featuring a diverse range of production and guest appearances. However, due to various circumstances, the album's release was delayed, leaving fans eagerly awaiting its arrival. Throughout his early music career, Santana's unique style and captivating storytelling abilities set him apart from his peers. His raw and unfiltered lyrics resonated with listeners, painting a vivid picture of life in the streets of Chicago. Santana's rise to fame was a testament to his talent and dedication to his craft solidifying his position as one of the prominent figures in the drill music movement. While Fredo Santana's music career was on the ascent, he encountered a series of controversies and personal struggles that would profoundly shape his life and career. Santana, like King Von, was affiliated with the Black Disciples Gang, but one of the most formidable challenges he faced was his struggle with addiction, particularly to substances like Xanax and Lean. Santana openly admitted that his heavy drug use was a coping mechanism for the trauma he experienced during his childhood. He revealed that he suffered from post traumatic stress disorder, and drugs became a way for him to escape and numb the pain. Unfortunately, this addiction would have severe consequences for his health and well-being. In March 2017, Santana's addiction took a toll on his physical health when he experienced a seizure and was hospitalized. He attributed the seizure to his demanding schedule and poor sleep habits. This incident served as a wake-up call for Santana, highlighting the need to address his addiction and prioritize his well-being. Following the seizure, Santana was diagnosed with idiopathic epilepsy 
in May 2017. He was prescribed medication, Keppra, to manage his condition. However, despite the treatment, Santana continued to experience seizures, often multiple in a row. This ongoing struggle with epilepsy added another layer of complexity to his already challenging journey. In October 2017, Santana's health took a turn for the worse when he was found mid-seizure by his friend and fellow rapper Gino Marley. He was rushed to the hospital, where he received a devastating diagnosis of liver and kidney failure. The main contributing factors to his organ failure were his addiction to Xanax and lean. This critical moment served as a turning point for Santana, as he expressed a genuine desire to seek rehabilitation while in the hospital. The controversies surrounding Santana's addiction and health struggles were met with both concern and support from his fans and the music community. Many recognized the toll that addiction can take on an individual's life and applauded Santana's willingness to confront his demons and seek help. Despite the challenges he faced, Santana's determination to overcome his addiction and prioritize his well-being was evident. He expressed a genuine interest in going to rehab, demonstrating his commitment to turning his life around and reclaiming his health. Tragically, on the evening of January 19, 2018, Santana's life was cut short when his girlfriend discovered him unresponsive at their home in Reseda, Los Angeles. He was pronounced dead shortly after, at the age of 27. An autopsy revealed that Santana had developed cardiovascular disease in addition to his pre-existing conditions, ultimately leading to his fatal seizure. The untimely death of Fredo Santana served as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of addiction and the importance of prioritizing mental and physical well-being. His struggles with addiction and the impact it had on his health shed light on the darker side of the music industry and the challenges that artists face behind the scenes. Number 5. Idai 600 Born in 1988, Idai 600 burst onto the scene in 2012 with his breakout hit, Gucci. The song rapidly gained traction, highlighting Idai's distinctive style and lyrical prowess. With its infectious beat and catchy hooks, Gucci evolved into an anthem for the streets of Chicago and beyond. This initial success laid the groundwork for Idai's future in the music industry. Building on his initial breakthrough, Idai caught the attention of fellow rapper Chief Keith. The two artists collaborated on a track called Gucci Remix, which further propelled Idai's career. The remix showcased their chemistry and solidified Edai's presence in the drill rap scene. The collaboration not only expanded his fan base, but also garnered critical acclaim, establishing Edai as a force to be reckoned with. Inspired by the streets of Chicago, Edai's music reflected the harsh realities of life in the city's neighborhoods. His lyrics painted vivid pictures of the struggles, violence, and resilience that defined his community. Edai's authenticity and raw storytelling resonated with listeners, earning him a loyal following. In 2014, Edai took a significant step in his career by founding the label Team 600 ENT. This move allowed him to not only release his own music, but also provide a platform for other talented artists in the drill rap scene. Team 600 ENT became a hub for emerging talent, further solidifying Edai's influence and impact on the genre. That same year, Edai released his solo album, Came From Nothing. The project showcased his growth as an artist and featured a mix of hard-hitting tracks and introspective moments. Came From Nothing received positive reviews from critics and fans alike, cementing Edai's status as a rising star in the music industry. Edai 600 was no stranger to controversy. His unfiltered lyrics and confrontational persona often landed him in the midst of heated disputes with other artists. One of the most notable controversies was his ongoing rivalry with fellow Chicago rapper FBG Duck. The tension between the two escalated over time, fueled by diss tracks and public confrontations that captivated the attention of fans and the media. The feud between Edai and FBG Duck was marked by a series of back and forth disses, each artist aiming to outdo the other with their lyrical prowess. The intensity of their rivalry spilled over into the streets, leading to clashes between their respective entourages. The feud not only divided fans, but also drew attention to the underlying tensions within the drill rap scene. Amidst the feud, tragedy struck when FBG Duck was killed in a drive-by shooting in August 2020. The controversy surrounding Edai extended beyond his feud with FBG Duck. He found himself embroiled in other disputes and clashes, further adding to his controversial image. On August 1st, 2021, the music world was shaken by the devastating news of Edai 600's untimely timely death. Reports emerged that he had been shot multiple times, with two gunshot wounds to his back. However, cop scanner audio seemed to confirm that he was shot a total of six times in his chest and stomach. Despite being rushed to the hospital, Edai couldn't be saved, leaving his fans and the music industry in shock. The loss of Edai 600 sent shockwaves through the drill rap community. Fans and fellow artists mourned the passing of a rising star whose talent and potential were cut short. Tributes poured in on social media, with many expressing their disbelief and sadness. The 
tragic event served as a stark reminder of the dangers and violence that can often accompany fame in the music industry. The impact of Edai's legacy continues to reverberate in the drill rap scene. His music, characterized by its raw and unfiltered storytelling, resonated with listeners who connected with the realities he depicted. Edai's lyrics captured the struggles, violence, and resilience of his community, shedding light on the harsh realities of life in Chicago's neighborhoods. His authenticity and fearlessness in addressing these issues made him a voice for the voiceless. Edai's influence extended beyond his music. He was a symbol of the streets, representing the experiences and struggles of those who often go unheard. His unapologetic approach to his craft inspired a new generation of artists to embrace their truth and use their platform to shed light on social issues. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, click on one of the boxes playing on your screen to watch more similar content.